And, well, I'll sort of just, you, you, anybody can sort of speak up first, whoever wants to sort of jump right in. As we've watched the economy um, take a nosedive, we've all, we've all seen this, um, and some employers struggle to find enough work to keep employers busy, or sorry, keep workers busy, um, is it still important to be known as an employer of choice? Um, are benefits, both formal and, and informal, uh, still important? Why or why not? Can I start? Yeah, go ahead. Um, it's absolutely still important to be a top employer. I don't think we'll get any dispute about that. Um, first, because the recession is going to be over and we'll be back into, oh my God, where do I find all the employees I need? Um, second, because we need every employee that we have right now focused on the most important things to keep our company growing. Uh, i.e., they still have to be engaged, um, uh, they still have to be developing their careers, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but um, the things that um, you do to help motivate employees shift a little bit um, because certainly our employees are more stressed than they were um, two years ago. They're worried about their jobs, they're worried about their spouse's jobs, uh, they're worried about, you know, did they pay too much for their house? Um, are their kids going to uh, find a job when they finish university? All of those kinds of things. Uh, and so, you know, maybe some of the benefits that we offered before are not the same things that are crucially important to them now. I would say similarly at Bear, we take the same view that, um, you know, uh, right now is an important time to, you know, keep focused on our employees and, and what they're feeling and, and uh, how, you know, they're coping with, uh, you know the the different demands, um, and you know our talent. I mean, we're we're sort of in a human capital. You know, most of our employees are you know degrees, master degrees, PhDs. You know, our top talent always has choices, even during these times, um, in terms of going to other organizations. And so, uh, you know, we continue to you know you know get feedback from employees about you know how they're feeling through this time. Uh, things like their pensions and their savings plans. We've had sort of a renewed focus and education around those because of these times and by chance luckily maybe about a year year and a half ago we had sort of started a review of our our programs and we had changed the asset mix to be more conservative in our uh, defined benefit pension plan um, and at the same time you know we were forced to make a switch because uh, fidelity exited the market on our savings plans etc and that just allowed us opportunities to educate people about these programs the long-term nature of savings and, and things like that and then we've had a renewed focus on unemployed development uh, that's one area that we're not going to cut back on um, career development. We've got some big initiatives that are going to be going uh, on this year around, uh, you know, educating people about their careers and the career choices that they have. Um, and so, uh, you know, we've basically, you know, just more cut marginally travel, things like that, but are reinvesting actually more in employee development, career development, those initiatives. So I think with this tough time out there and 85% of our businesses in the U.S., so they're being hit especially hard, as we all know. The most important thing, I think, in any business at any time is finding the right people and treating them right. So anyone that would ever come to our office, the Junction in Vancouver, we're heavily branded with a thousand trucks, logos all over the trucks, but we don't have a logo at the front reception in place. Instead, it says it's all about people, and it's got my name below it. And that came from a marketing manager that said, hey, listen, Brian, you always say this company is all about people. Let's put that front and center, big quote, up on a vinyl decal, and let's hold ourselves to that. And what it does is it makes us every single day see that quote and go, okay, this is a company about people and we have a corporate responsibility to take care of our people, find the right people, treat them right. So in this tough time, we're spending a lot of time on personal development. We just hired a new president, an ex-Starbucks president who came into the company and Lonnie's phenomenal. I'm very lucky and grateful. And so she came in, one of the first things she did, which was counterintuitive and kind of scared the heck out of me. She, cut the com she shut the company down for two days not the trucks out in the field, but everyone else, and said, we're going to focus on personal development, on goals, we're going to bring in an outside facilitator, and during this time, we're going to use this time to really develop our people, because better people make better employees and better companies. And it seemed counterintuitive, but I, once I understood, I was like, wow, that's brilliant. You know, let's focus the time up front to help make better people and help them accomplish things outside of 1-800-GOT-JUNK, not just within. And it's working great.
maybe is this the, to- the right time to do that kind of thing? If things are actually slowing down, let's say these things are slowing down a little bit, maybe this is the best time to sort of refocus and take stock of what you're doing as well. Yeah. But it's a real challenge how you do that yeah. because um, if things are slowing down, that means there are fewer opportunities for people to get promoted. Um, you know, the company is not growing into so many new areas, so you're not doing new things all the time. Um, so, yes, you can do formal training, you can do goal setting, but we know that people learn the best from what they're actually doing on the job. So how do you keep giving people new experiences so that they can grow their skills um, in, you know, as, as uh, we were saying before, you know, um, flat is the new up. Um, so it's not the booming growth economy where there's all those tons of opportunities. And you have to be very, very deliberate about that. You have to be very deliberate about these are the kinds of experiences that we can give people. These are special projects people can work on. These are opportunities to take people along to a meeting even if they don't necessarily have a speaking role at that meeting because it's a new learning experience for them. Um, So you can't just talk about development. You have to have very focused programs to make it happen. Maybe we can sort of head into the how-to section of this now. Uh, what have you done in order to retain your best talent, your, your best people, during these times when the procession is taking a hit? Um, and how have you kept your people engaged? Maybe give me some stories, uh, ki- give me tips, whatever you want to offer up. I can jump in. Um, so a quick story. Back in 1994, five years into the business, I had 11 employees, and nine of them were awful. And two were one bad apple spoils the whole bunch, so it made them all bad. And I brought them all into the office one day, and I said, you know what? Sorry, everybody. This isn't working. And I fired them all on the spot, and some of them were bigger than me, but I got out alive. And I said, hey, listen, this, I'm just sorry, but this is your leader that let you down. I didn't either find the right people or develop you or spend enough time really giving you the attention you deserved and the training to, to really promote you to be better people within the company. So on that day, I went from having five trucks and a call center and so on down to me being everybody, and it was a tough time. But that taught me the lesson that's all about people. And I think when you talk about what are people doing now during this economy, I don't really differentiate. Yeah, I'm aware of the economy, and yeah, the flat's the new up, and can't wait till the new up is up again and all that. But it's, it's a tough time, but I think you always have to take care of people. And so things we're doing to engage our people... We have something uh, similar to uh, Razor's, I can't remember what he calls it, their master plan. We call ours our painted picture. And I had created a painted picture, two pages, what the company looks, feels, and acts like at a point in the future that has engaged our company in building out and making a vision come true of what we're trying to build. And we get people to do that on a personal level as well. We've got a 101 life goals program. So we'll do a lunch and learn. People will come in. Not everybody does this. We try and get them to do 20 goals in 20 minutes, or sorry, 100 goals, 101 goals in 20 minutes things that are important in their life, and if they want to, they're volunteering to share their list with us or someone else in the company, we'll do everything we can to try and make some of those dreams come true through the business or connections that someone might have. So I think that engages people to go, hey, I'm not just here because it's a job. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to to do something great. And we've got a family of people in the company that are helping people make those things happen. What's the the average age at 1-800? Probably... Early 30s, yeah. 30-ish. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. I would say at uh, at Bayer, I mean, we made a number of investment years ago um, in employee engagement, uh, just through employee surveys and feedback that we received. Uh, we put in a life at work program. Uh, to sort of make things more convenient for people, given the fact that they do spend a lot of time at work. Um, We put in a gymnasium. We have a putting green outside, driving nets. Uh, We have a lounge, a quiet room. Uh, Those investments, uh, an outdoor all-purpose court, those investments during times like this um, have, you know, know, paid dividends because the employees know we're going to invest when we're able, you know, to invest in the business. Um, I think, uh, you know, now probably the biggest thing that we're doing is really, you know, um, having lots of conversations with employees through town halls to let them know how the business is going um, so that they, you know, are aware of 
you know, what shape the business is in. We don't, we don't sugarcoat it. We say, you know, these businesses are growing. This business is, you know, declining. We're reviewing, basically, um, our business models. It's a perfect time, you know, with a changing environment and changing markets uh, to look at how we do business. And so we've got a number of teams and various businesses looking at how we do and how we can continue to grow these businesses, even in these times. And that seems to, you know, engage people. So I think communication, open, honest communication during these times is very, very, you know, critical uh, so that people, you know, have a good understanding of what's going on, what we're doing, how we're going to get above the challenges, you know, et cetera. The worst thing is to blindside your employees. Right.